This is one in a series of videos that I'm doing on simple bioactivity. If you're interested, look for the other videos. There's also a Facebook group called Simple Bioactive Reptile and Amphibian Vivariums. I wanted to do a short video on bioactive substrate. And I also wanted to talk a little bit about some of the supplements and additives that you can buy for substrates. And what I hope to do is compare the simple or the cheap substrate that I use, it's just miracle Grow potting mix, with the more expensive substrates that you can get at the, the bio stores online or, or at reptile shows. I need to clarify first is that what we're talking about here is potting mix, not potting soil, not topsoil. Potting mix is designed specifically for containers and is often called a soilless mix. So for the purposes of comparison, we wanted to look first at, let's see, miracle Grow's website, and it has the ingredients listed here. It's a blend of sphagnum peat moss, aged bark vines, perlite plant food, and a wetting agent. And it goes on that their product called Moisture Control Potting Mix contains coconut core or coconut husks. So if you compare this miracle Grow potting mix with the, there's an industry standard really bioactive substrate called ABG at the Atlanta Botanical Garden Mix, you can see that the ingredients are essentially the same. And that makes sense because they're both designed to function in closed containers. So if we look at Josh's Frogs website, we can see that the substrate that they're selling is essentially the same thing as the ABG mix or as the miracle Grow potting mix. Um, you know, it's a, a mix of the, of the sphagnum moss and a, a bark and peat. And in their case, they're using an expanded slate, which, you know, in miracle Grow they use uh, perlite, which is an expanded obsidian stone. It's both stones, same thing. The difference, of course, is that at Josh's Frogs, you get four quarts for $13 plus shipping, which isn't cheap. I ordered some of this product to test it out, and in my case, it came to almost $24 with shipping. That's $6 a quart. And if you compare that with miracle Grow potting mix, it comes down to 50 cents a quart. That means that Josh's Frog substrate is essentially the same thing, 12 times more expensive. So I called the bio dude, and I talked to him about why he doesn't have the ingredients on his substrate. And, you know, he sort of agreed that they should. And he, he sort of agreed that the customer can make a better, a more informed decision. But there was kind of a lot of excuses as to why he didn't. It was complicated. They were busy, etc. And, you know, frankly, I've noticed that they have added more ingredients to some of their other products. And, and looking at the ingredients, I sort of see why they were reluctant to put the ingredients on their products. So I'll talk more about that in a little bit. I also talked to the guy that runs or owns or manages Houston Frogs, and he said that their product is so special, so proprietary, with so many special ingredients that he just didn't feel comfortable putting that information out there for fear that somebody would grab it, would steal it from him. So you can make up your own mind about why they don't put the ingredients on their substrate mixes. I did order. Uh, from these three companies, and I do intend to sort of do some sort of side-by-side -side experiment to see if they have any appreciable difference or if they're different from the miracle Grow potting mix. The other thing I just wanted to briefly mention were these supplements or additives that you can buy now. Uh, there's a couple problems with them. For one, if you don't know what your substrate needs, then there's no way to tell whether these additives are going to do, uh, are going to benefit your substrate or actually cause harm. If you ask any horticulturist what you need to, in the way of supplement for your garden, for instance, the first thing they'll ask you is, where's your garden at now? You know, what, what's, where's your soil analysis? Because they know that you can actually do more harm than good by adding supplements, fertilizers, etc. If you don't know where you stand, if you don't know where you, if you need these things or not. And in a vivarium, chances are you don't need them. 
The second thing that really bothers me about them is that they're made up of the simplest sort of ingredients that are just dirt cheap if you went out and bought them. Like this one here, this BioVibe, I think it's called. It's made up of worm castings. You can buy by the bale for a few bucks. It's a great source of organic uh, matter and organic fertilizer, but do you need it? You know, you don't know. You may be over fertilizing your plants, which can actually kill them. So if you don't know you need it, why are you buying it and putting it on your substrate? The second thing, they always make them sound so mysterious. You know, I think uh, the bio dude actually refers to one of his uh, supplements as miraculous. You know, <laughs> that, that made me laugh because it's made up of worm castings. It's made up of calcium carbonate, which is basically the, the ingredient in eggshells. It's got an ingredient called azomite, which sounds wonderfully mysterious, but it's simply rock dust. So, I mean, they're obviously going way out of their way to convince you that the, the product is something that it's not. Let me show you what I mean. This is a um, soil analysis that I had done at a soil lab in Minnesota to look at a substrate that I took out of a simple bioactive vivarium that had been running for about 14 months. I had a large, relatively large snake in this vivarium, producing lots of waste. And I had a bunch of pothos plants, presumably absorbing a lot of that waste, um, or the, the chemical breakdown resulting from that waste. And you can see on this analysis that the, the critical or the primary nutrients, the NPK, are high, they're not too high. They're, this is actually a very rich substrate. It'd be wonderful for your garden, for instance. But if you look down at what they, the micronutrients, what they call the salts sometimes, these are critically important nutrients for plants, but they're very, very high in this substrate. In fact, if I were growing anything other than pothos in this, in this tank, um, the plants would definitely be showing signs of stress. So the point I wanted to make here is just that you can't add supplements to your substrate soil if you don't know, if you haven't had an analysis done on your substrate. You can't just say, well, my plants aren't doing very good, so I need to get a bio boost or, or something like that, because you can actually be doing real damage. If you look at this analysis, the calcium levels on this are really sky high. I mean, this is higher than they should be. But if I started to see signs of stress and I looked at the BioDude's website, you would think that his products, you know, his, his BioVibe Soil Revitalizer, right, or his BioDude Soil Cal Plus, you think, wow, that's the, that's the answer, you know, that's what I need. Both of those products are loaded with calcium, right, and both of those products would send my bioactive vivarium over the, over the edge. So you can't just start throwing stuff at your vivarium hoping that it's going to do something without knowing what the problem is in the first place. So the last thing I wanted to talk about were these microbials, like the so-called so beneficial fungi and other microbials. And I wanted to sort of point out that these things were initially developed for like the industrial agricultural industry, like, you know, industrial um, vegetable production. And the pitch was is that, you know, they'll make your your production 2% or 5% larger, whatever. More apples, bigger, bigger tomatoes, something like that. Well, when, when they started to actually do the research on them, they found out that it doesn't really work. It doesn't increase production. But more importantly, I think, for people in, in the bioactive hobby is that even if they did work, what difference would that really make if your if your plants were growing three percent faster, or if they ended up being five percent bigger? You know, the the claims that the that the sellers make for these products are really completely unsubstantiated, and they're not cheap products. So I would suggest too that when it comes to these sort of additives, you just spend your money on things that you know are going to be beneficial. I doubt seriously if any of these products are going to make any difference whatsoever. So I talked to a, years ago when these things were still getting big, I talked to a horticulture professor 
I grow things, and so I'm in communication with these professors and researchers. And I asked her about, you know, this fungi in particular, and she said that the deal with the with the fungi, for instance, is that um, if the plant is under a lot of stress, if it's in a drought or if it's diseased, they can actually provide some benefit to the plants, or at least in the laboratory they do. But the plants in our vivarium should never be under any stress. I mean, they're, they're living in an ideal environment. So these, uh, these products don't, don't benefit us in, in, in our hobby. I sometimes get people um, express some concerns about this miracle grow potting mix. They, they have some vague idea that it might be toxic. I think they misunderstand sort of the nature of chemical fertilizers or something, but, but I thought I would show this video. This is a breakdown I'm doing of a simple bioactive setup that I had some dart frogs in about five months ago. I think I, I put a, just a very few of these dwarf isopods in there and forgot about them. And you can see that their population has just exploded. This is 80% uh, miracle grow potting mix and about 20% sand. And this guy over here is my miracle grow guinea pig. I bought him at a pet store. He was just a little thing and put him in here about four or five months ago. This is 100% miracle grow. And he's been buried in it, you know, as they do ever since then. He doesn't even have a water bowl. I just have to be careful with the, with the moisture levels in the substrate like you do in any bioactive vivarium. Obviously no misting system, no drainage layer, none of that stuff. And, he, and he's doing great. You know, he comes up to the surface, he eats like a pig, and then he burrows back down in his substrate. So here's the answer to the quiz question. Where did all those wonderful nutrients come from in that substrate that I had tested at the lab in Minnesota?